Howdy y'all, I'm Scott. I recently decided to upgrade my home network from a NetDuma R2, which I've been using for the last couple of years, to an Ultimate Dream Machine Pro. And man, I've been really happy. Over the last few weeks, the Dream Machine has been treating me really well. But one of the unfortunate things is only Duma OS routers have gaming geofiltering. I know you think, oh, how important is geofiltering? It's actually incredibly important when it comes to your gaming. If you play a lot online, like I do, a mix of different games, it is incredibly helpful to be able to see the ping of the servers, the players, the location, all the things that the geofilter within Duma OS does. So this sent me down a path. How do I get the ultimate dream machine and my NetDuma R2 to work together? What are the best options? How do I set up quality of service? And over the last couple of weeks, I've been running lots of tests and I finally am ready to tell you guys my results. So let's get into it. Setting up everything will be a lot easier if you happen to have more than one network adapter on your computer, because you can work on one router with one network adapter while the other router is on the other network adapter, but it's disabled. And then when you need to switch back and forth, you can just disable the one you no longer are working on and enable the one you are working on. It just makes things easier. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and log into our NetDuma R2 as there is a bit of prep work we need to do. First things first, we need to come down here to ad blocker and we need to disable ad blocker. I use Next DNS for all my ad blocking needs. You can block ads, malware, pretty much anything you need to out there, customize rules, etc. It's a great service. Check it out if you want. All right, so after you've disabled the ad blocker, we're gonna head down to network settings and we're gonna start off on the LAN side of things. We're gonna turn off IPv6 and we are gonna turn on DMZ. Then we are gonna give ourselves an IP address. I chose 119, just seemed to be good enough. All right, so 119 and then we're gonna go ahead and save those settings. Then once that is saved, we're gonna head on over to our Wi-Fi tab. We do want Wi-Fi enabled either for the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz network. I don't necessarily recommend using both in this particular setup, but you do want this on so that you can still log into your R2 via Wi-Fi and control your geo filter, ping heat map, all the stuff that you would want to control on your phone. So go ahead and set everything up as per normal, save your wireless. Then we're gonna head over to UPnP and we're just gonna make sure to disable it. So we disable it and again, we're gonna save the UPnP settings. All right, once that's done, we're gonna head over to the WAN side of things. We're gonna disable IPv6. We're gonna disable allow ping. We're gonna disable port scan and send flood. These things are all being taken care of by the dream machine. So you do not have to have them on. And then we're gonna go ahead and save our settings here. And that's it. Once we have set all of that up, we can go ahead and reboot the NetDuma R2. So it's gonna apply your settings. Then you come over here to this little drop down menu and you can hit the reboot button. Once everything is rebooted, we can come back and start work on the dream machine side of things. First things first, we got to get everything plugged in together. So we take an ethernet cable from the LAN port of our dream machine. We stick it in the back of the R2's WAN port. And then we take another ethernet cable from the LAN port of the R2 and put it in the back of our console. For me, it's a Series X. Once all that's done, we can log into our dream machine and go ahead and go through the next steps. Once you have the R2 and ultimate dream machine, your console all plugged together, you can log into your dream machine, come over to your topology and you should see the R2 populate. Once it has, you give it a click and we're going to come over here to the settings tab and we're gonna click that. You can give it a name so you know what it is, but we need to turn on fixed IP. We turn that on and we're gonna use the 
exact last three digits that we used within the R2's DMZ. In my case, that was 119. So we're gonna copy that 119 from the R2 over to here, and then we're going to apply changes. All right, when we're all done with that, we head down to settings, firewall, security, scroll down a ways. We wanna create a new port forwarding rule. I've already done that. So you guys can just take a look at mine here. I've named it R2 UDP because it's for the R2 and using UDP. We're gonna enable that rule. WAN from any, the port numbers here. These are important, 3074 to 3079. Now, 3074 is Xbox Live and pretty much every Xbox game out there, including Call of Duty. However, Call of Duty uses some other ports in between there. So opening 3074 to 3079 guarantees open NAT for even older Call of Duty titles. So you make sure you have that range open. The forward IP, the same IP address that you put in earlier. 1.119 then the forwarding port will match as the same up here and the protocol again we don't have to use both we don't have to use tcp we're just going to use udp and if we would like logging we can enable it all right so now we've enabled our firewall stuff the next thing to do is set up quality of service both here on the dream machine and then on the net duma r2 let's start off with the dream machine all right, to enable smart queues on the Dream Machine, settings, internet, choose your WAN, and then right up top here, you'll have your expected ISP speeds, which for me is about 560 down and 22 up. Then you wanna use the advanced stuff and turn on your smart queues. And as you can see, I've lowered it by 100 megs to 460 down and from 22 to 18. Now, when setting up smart queues, the recommendation is to start out about 80% of your overall bandwidth, and then you may be able to go higher or lower, or there's somewhere in there that's gonna work great for you. And for me, I tried higher, I tried lower, tried some things in between. It really ended up being quite smooth through the network and just capping it by 100 here. So I capped it by 100, and that's what worked best for me. So buffer bloat, all of those tests come back clean when it comes to the dream machine side of things. But now we've got to head on over to the R2 and set up quality of service there. All right, so we've logged back into the R2. Now we need to head down to quality of service. And even though it seems completely counterintuitive to leave the quality of service on within Duma OS and also have smart queues going within the dream machine surprisingly enough it gave me the best result overall i tried disabling quality of service and even deep packet inspection a few different times just to see how things were don't get me wrong smart queues does its job but every now and again i would get in and it just wouldn't feel smooth and those times would really annoy me so once I set everything up within Duma OS, that stopped and gameplay was just smooth. So the first thing we need to do here is go ahead and set our bandwidth speeds. And you can see that I'm set up at 210, which is nowhere close to the 460 and 18 that is available to me through my dream machine. I went ahead and capped my Xbox myself so the only thing i have connected to the r2 is the xbox okay i guess i have my phone but it's really not doing anything it's an old phone and it's literally there just so i can connect to the r2 and see the geo filter ping heat map stuff of that nature i'm not surfing the web or anything else on that phone so it's barely using any bandwidth i mean it does stuff phones do things but it's it's not causing any problems using anything major. So I've capped my Xbox speed at 200. That's half of the 460, uh, give or take, right? And then the 18 that I have on the UMD, I moved down to 10. 
Now, if you do an auto detect or you go do a speed test, it will show you your proper speeds, at least most of the time. Sometimes auto detect is a little weird, but when you're setting everything up, you want your console to not even come close to the bandwidth cap that you've set up through your dream machine. That way there's no spikes when you're playing. So if you're downloading a game while you're playing, it won't start spiking when things are available a little bit more, you know, Xbox is able to send a little bit more information that could cause a spike in your game while it's downloading in the background. That is not stuff we want. So we've capped our bandwidth 210. We're going to leave congestion control set to always. This leaves the system always on. So my speeds are always 210 capped. It can't reach any further than that. When I'm downloading games without playing something, it gets really close to that 200 and it just sails right along, which is perfectly fine because I only have 460 in the house and I want that other bandwidth available to the other devices I have going. Okay, so we've set up congestion control. It's good to go. Leave it at 100%. We've capped it the way we want to, what works best for our network. Everybody's gonna have a little bit different settings. Although, if you have somewhere around my bandwidth, you can give the 210 a try. It should actually work pretty good for you. The bandwidth wheel. I have seen so many people over the years mess with this thing. I mean, wouldn't you wanna take gaming and go, woo, put it at 100% so that it, it has all the quality of service going to gaming and not any of these other categories. And the simple answer to that is no. The quality of service system within Duma OS automatically will adjust itself for what's needed within the system. So if it's doing VoIP or gaming or whatever it's doing, it will take the needed bandwidth. So even though you can come and click on this and say, oh, look, I've got 18 here, or I can click on the upload side and click here and say, oh, I only got 0.9, that ain't nothing. Well, it doesn't matter because the system is automatically sharing that bandwidth with everything else. So you don't need to mess with this wheel. That's for this setup or just any R2 setup, Duma OS setup in general. Don't touch the wheel. Next thing you need to worry about is traffic prioritization. You can see I have some custom rules. I talked about in a previous video that Duma OS classified games with this gaming voice is actually meant for Wi-Fi. Now I've complained about this a couple of times. One, the naming scheme. Two, uh, the fact that this is meant for Wi-Fi and not ethernet. I mean, most of us out there are not playing on Wi-Fi, not unless we absolutely have to. If we care about our online gaming experience, we have our stuff hooked up to an ethernet cable. And as I mentioned in a previous video, you have to do customized rules if you have an ethernet cable. So we're gonna go ahead and go through that process. We're gonna add device. And for us, it's the Xbox Series X. And then we're gonna click next. Now, you may see some options here on my list that you do not currently have, such as Battlefield series or Call of Duty series. Don't worry, these are things that are being added to the deep packet inspection system within Duma OS. If it hasn't made it to your router yet, it will in the future. Just, just be patient. Eventually, these things will show up for you. Just chill. All right, so if you don't have any of these extra things and you're on a games console, you want to find games console. So you scroll down until you see games console. We give that a click and then you may have the advanced tab or not. If you don't, just go ahead and move on. If you do, click the advanced tab and it'll give us some options. We have normal default. Normal default is for ethernet video, which is for video, and then gaming voice, which is for Wi-Fi. Again, I hope they rename these one day. What we want to do is use normal default because we are running an ethernet cable. We want to apply to WAN and we'll apply these things to the WAN side as well. And then we're going to click done. All right. So now we have a games console rule sitting here. Games console will cover anything you play on your console that is considered gaming. However, when you're doing that, uh, you know, it's fine, but as these newer options get added to your system, you're actually going to want to use those and turn off games console when you're using those. So for example, here I play call of duty. 
I have the ability to add that to my list, so I have, and you can see that it is on. So when I go play Call of Duty, it will start doing traffic prioritization for Call of Duty. However, if I have games console on at the exact same time, it's trying to prioritize both things together and that causes problems. So if you have these other options, you can come through here, you can add them. Just remember to shut off games console when you're playing those particular games and to turn it back on when you're not so that you have prioritized traffic. Again, surprisingly enough, these particular settings work the best when it comes to a smooth online gaming experience. I know it surprised me too. Why would you want both quality of service systems on at the same time? Doesn't make a lot of sense, but it works. If this thing, uh, this video here, although long, if it was helpful, you know what to do. Until the next time, take it easy.